Hi, welcome back to Mechanic Garage. It's amazing I quit the bloody trees go green behind you, doesn't it? They were sticks last week. Anyway, uh, I've got front bearings to do on the brown one. Um, I saw it notes in a previous video when I did all the front brakes and everything that the bearings will spin really, really easily. So there's not a lot of grease in there. I'm doing everything else, so I may as well do that too. And there'll be a bit of faffing about with the green one as well. I've got tyres to fit on the wheels for the brown one. And it's just a case of finishing off loose ends, oil and filter change maybe later on, and it's just then a bit of welding and then clean up an MOT. So if anybody's interested in a... There it is. A Skoda 120L with a five-speed box in it, so it's technically an L5. Um, let me know. It'll have full MOT. If you watch the videos, you can see exactly how much work it's had done and everything else. So fingers crossed it can go to a good home. Right, I'm at garage now. I'm going to get some tyres fitted. I'll uh, just swap them over. The Wartburg wheels that had good tyres on that I replaced. So these have gone to Skoda and that's four brand new tyres on it. fitted so I'm going to take them off those they're perfectly good tread wise this is where people sell tyres is nearly new but really not that's like 15 year old 10 year old maybe something like that and these are about 18 months 2 year old but perfectly alright for Skoda full set of matching new tyres and uh, that's it go back and get them fitted right need to get caliper off the yeah. Uh, First thing, get that off out of the way, and we can uh, get the hub and the disc off then. But yeah, it's been a bit of a uh, resurrection this job. Not really much wrong with it, and I had a majority of things anyway from working on the green one. So it's been a good use of parts that I already had tyres, the brakes are all alright, brake pipes and if you've seen the other videos on it we're swapping the entire rear end uh, mechanically re mechanical rear end anyway and the interior still got to put the radio back in because it's wired slightly different and uh, I need to look up for the clock it's got three wires to it I can't, can't remember if one was ignition and one was um well, it wouldn't be battery live anyway. But I don't remember it ever going off in the other car. I think it was on all the time. Just an LCD to run so it doesn't take any power up. Right, in here there should be two little shims. Maybe not. Some have them, some don't. Back them up here. It's a case of... Uh, Levering it off and knocking that off if I can. This isn't sharp anyway, it's just a bit of a blunt. There you go. No idea what size that is in there, I can't remember from when I did the last one. So I just brought the big adjustable, but I might just use a socket. But yeah, there's grease in them, but that's just way too loose. Just if everything else is getting done, why not just do this too? At least I know everything's sorted. Was it 19? No, 20, 22? Yep, 22. Yeah, that's loose per finger tie anyway. There's no roughness in the bearings, they're all nice and clean. Yeah, you see there's uh, there's grease in there, but not an awful lot. So I'll get them greased up, rear seal, I'm gonna try and get out without damaging, because I haven't got one. 
remember right that they're metal in them anyway. Yeah, they are. So they can they can come out. Let's go and get a screwdriver, chisely type thing. Lift the little edge a little bit and get a bigger screwdriver in. There we go, pop the seal out. It's just a little leather seal inside. Most seals these days are rubber, but uh, yeah, there you go. There's, there's, there's grease in it, but certainly will not hurt, not hurt to get it uh, repacked. I'll give them a bit of a wipe out and get check them for damage or anything. Could go completely mad and wash them all out fully and not drop them. But I think there's there's no muck in them, they're not rough, so I'll be uh, I'll just benefit from having a bit of grease back. Yeah, if you look inside there, let's see inside the bearings, there's nothing in it. Well very little anyway. It's what you get them in service and stuff. It's, it happens. Now, there's two or three ways of doing these. But <coughs> what you need to do is force grease in between the two halves. I'll move you a little bit. Force grease in between the two halves of the bearing. If you just wrap it around it, grease, it'll run in it, but it won't be there. So what you do is that edge turn it that edge here force it down into the edge of the grease and just keep doing that all the way around and you'll see little little blobs appearing that's forced up between the rollers don't overpack it too solid so once you get like three quarters of the way around or so you get it in between all the rollers anyway any dirt that's in there gets pushed out, which but the smooth enough anyway. And then you just get a bit of the excess, rub it around the outside. Don't put too much on. Some people daub them in the inside in here with it. Doesn't hurt. But that's that one done. And say so put too much in them, then they can just squidge it out everywhere. But that's slightly better. I do the uh, other bearing. Same thing again. Just rub it. All you're doing is forcing it through the groove, getting it into the uh, rollers. It doesn't take a lot of grease. It just makes a bloody great mess. It's the worst thing about it. You send it completely covered. I'll give this a bit of a wipe down. Make sure there's no damage or anything on it, which. Almost certainly there won't be. No, it's all okay. And you get your seal. You give that a wipe off, get rid of any old stuff. That could do with a smear of grease on it because it's uh, fabric, leathery felt stuff. It relies on being lubricated rather than rubber. Tap that back in, wipe off any excess on the back. With this uh, not perfect, but they'll, they'll scrub up when they're in use. Same with the front one. A bit in there. Bearing back in. And then you've got to adjust it up so that you've got a little bit of free play and it's not tight. Because if it's tight, they'll overheat. If it's too loose, 
then uh, they'll get flying knocking. Once you get it touching, then spin it whilst tightening it. That seats your bearings. Don't go stupidly tight, but tight enough that it's got a bit of resistance on it. And you want to go back so it's loose and then go back forward a little bit and just a little bit of finger pressure on it. And there's a look that washer. Let's see if I can see if I can show it. You should be able to just about move that little tiny bit of movement on it. Not like flapping around, but like a sliding fit so that it's not pinned solid. Yeah, there you go. Can't really see it, it's only a tiny bit of movement, but it just allows it to move. It's got a bit of pressure on it. But is isn't, isn't held down tightly. A uh, new split pin. I said new these things are not too small. They got wet, so everything's just gone grotty. New split pin through. Now some people bend them sideways, some people bend them up and over. I tend to do it up and over, snip the bottom one off. Preference, there's no right or wrong way. That's it uh, locked in place. Cleaning the old grease out of here. Just because it's a build up of grot and everything over the years. Won't hurt to smear a bit in it just to stop any damp and rust, but that's plastic, it's painter coated anyway, but just to smear inside of it. It's always worth just daubing a little bit over you there, over the split pin and it stops, it does get any moisture, it stops that going rusty. And then having problems getting it out. And if you drop it, which you're not dropping in bits. So that's slowing down a lot more. It wasn't horrendous, there was grease in it. There was just a little bit, a little bit too much free play on it. So it was worth doing for the time it's taken about well, 10 minutes. Put the caliper back on. Move it back up a bit so you can see something. Get the caliper back on. So we've already done the pads and everything, this so these are fine. Now I know this should have shims in, I have got some. Yeah, here we go. Little shims that should be between the caliper and the pads. Uh, it's caliper and the hub. Just that both cars I've taken apart had them. This one uh, I've got missing out of this one. But they're so tiny, it doesn't really make much difference anyway. Maybe a case of some need them, some don't. I'll have to have a look where the caliper sits in relation to the hub. Yeah, the casting line on the caliper straight in the middle of this, that's right. I thought they were supposed to be there, but they're only tiny, look. They're real thin, thin shims. I don't really want to lay on the floor in my new hoodie, that's the problem. I'm struggling not to be able to see. I've got a new hoodie that I don't want to make it uh, grotty.
tighten these up, but we'll align the caliper. tight now. Yeah. Unless that's just because the pad's in a slightly different place. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just because the pad's a tiny bit further over. It's now rubbing the disc. The blood all the brakes but it hasn't been used or anything yet, so if I stamp on the brakes, I'm not sure it does run freely. I'm not sure that doesn't need bleeding again. There you go, yeah, it just wasn't quite seated straight. Now it is. I think I'm going to bleed the fronts again because they were done before the back so if there's any little pocket in this that just felt a little bit a little bit like too much travel on it so I think I'll do that again all right that's that side done I'll go and do the other side in fact before I go around and do the other side seeing as all my tools are here I can swap from there to here go to this car instead do the same job, but this time I'm going to change the disc while I'm at it. Chase the bits. Yeah, this was all, uh, there you go. It's not, here's one I prepared earlier, the same way around. Because I had these apart a couple of years ago, so these should all nice be nice and greased up. But I'll be checking them anyway. Now you see, I mean that's a little bit slower on the on there, just because it's uh, got grease in that in. It's adjusted up properly. It says properly. That felt quite tight. Not really. <clears throat> that rusty bit's dropping in. Uh, if you drop anything, wipe the grease, uh, wipe the muck off it. That doesn't want to play. Okay, that bearing wants to stay on the inside. It's pulled the seal out as well. Now, did it do that before? I can't remember. Because as you saw on the thing, that should come out with the uh, the hub. Have I, uh, I don't know, I can't remember if this did or not. But it needs to come off. Because mm. that seal now can't go back into the hub. Ah, I always find something. Yeah, well, okay. Right, well, for starters. Let's point you down at the disc. Can you see it now? Yeah. There's that disc there. Bloody ridiculously thin they are. So are these bolts. Because they're a bit... While they're alright for here. They don't fit on the new discs. And there's your waffle thin disc. 
there's your hub. I'll give that a good clean up. Stick your glasses on because any bits of wire flying out and cover up your bearings. It's basically just There's it clearing this up. You know, perfectly smooth, clean, flat face. Right, and then new disc, Fiat 500, 16 valve, machined out to suit. And because uh, of the holes, and the shape of the bolts this is and just generally better high tensile well, actually flywheel bolts so they'll be a lot stronger can't remember if i drilled these out or not sure i did you can get them a lot tighter and also they're a lot stronger with their own thread lock But do I need to modify that hub before I do? I think I do. Huh, one job turns into two or three. Right, I've extended the uh, arms of the bearing puller because the normal bolts that you get with it weren't long enough. So hopefully this will actually fit and work. Get that nice and square so it doesn't pull off too much one side. In this case now we've hopefully not pull the outer race off. Yeah, there you go. I just realised I haven't got my mic on so hopefully the sound's okay. There you go, that's easy enough. I've only ever used that once before. Rebuilt a Fiat gearbox, Fiat, Fiat Punto gearbox for my daughter's car. It's the only reason I bought it. It's literally been sat in there for the last well, six or seven years. Right, back here now. There we go, that's that sorted out. That 5mm flange off the end taken off, which means now that the caliper will miss it. Just that, I managed to get that bearing off, repacked it, and put it back on, and now it pulled the seal back out. So I'm going to just leave that as it is for now, so I can fit this and test it. So it's got to come on and off a few times, so I've got to modify these caliper mounts to suit the new calipers, like I did the other side. But uh, yeah, that hub, those discs have been machined to fit perfectly on the inside around the. Uh, hub using the 4x98 PCD that happened to be Fiat so it made sense to use Fiat discs and be able to secure them to the hub right. and I, I haven't put the other holes in they come with four studs and then the mountain hole they've just gone out to the next size up but yeah that's essentially that's sorted now, so that's event of disc conversion done. Not quite obviously, but uh, I'm going to tighten that down. So I need a spline drive to go and get that. I shall take a bolt with me and go and get the right ones. Basically, high tensile um, flywheel bolts with thread lock on, so they'll be perfect for this. For now, that will do, because I need to, it needs to come on and off several times, but that's nice and flush anyway, so that's good for me. I'll just stick the other bearing back in for now. Is that what it is with this side for some reason? These are all a bit, a little bit on the top. 
tight side. And get this back together and get the cover on. At least I don't need to get the book in there. Just tap that on gently for now. One step nearer. Obviously all that needs tightening up properly and adjusting and everything else, but for now it'll just keep the book out of the bearings. I haven't got time, to, uh, I haven't got round to doing the other side of the other car yet, but I might just go and do it now whilst I've got everything out and I'm covered in grease. There you go, it's back on the wheels. I think that's it, I've got that back brake to fix. I say fix, clean up and adjust. Um, a bit of welding. Screen wash pump doesn't work, even though it's trying, it's stuck, so I can strip that and clean it. But now, it's, uh, it's almost done. Yeah, I need to polish it, There's, that looks awful. As you saw on the other one, I managed to get this back together with the disc, uh, new disc on. I still need to modify the carrier and that to get the caliper on, but essentially we'll be looking like that once it's set back together. Then we can sort them out and get rid of the surface rust and sort out some brake hoses. So next I'm going to sort out the gear linkage on this one and then uh, get the gear linkage and everything back in, get all the uh, bushes and everything that I got back in and then we're all right. It'll get go from there then. Right, well I think that'll do for today, and uh, made quite a bit of progress. The brown one's back on its wheels, pretty much drivable now, it's got one brake to sort as I said. One step closer, I'm hoping I've got a feed, uh, a lead on some rear suspension arms out in uh, Eastern Europe. So we're going to try and get those in the next week or two, and uh, then I can start rebuilding the back end. I was hoping to get the engine back together on it today, but I managed to get all the brakes and everything done instead, which doesn't really matter, it's all needs doing. So. Uh, Anyway, thanks very much for uh, watching, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers!